Hi there, everyone. Welcome to episode 623 of the Mike from Main Show, the place where we do daily interviews with successful online entrepreneurs. This is your host, Mike Thomas, and today on the show, we have Ian Ralphs on, and we're going to be talking about a way that you can protect your video content from being stolen and distributed around the internet without your permission. Now, there are different ways of doing this, different ways of keeping those robbers away and keeping your content safe. We're going to talk about those today. Here's Ian. We are here today with Ian Ralphs, one of the co-founders of VidProtect. Ian has worked in the online business world for over 15 years, working as a senior digital consultant for some of the largest brands, digital and advertising agencies globally. And more recently, he's been working specifically in private consulting and developing software and content management systems in the IM and finance niches. He's teamed up with Radu Haihayanu, uh, a name I'm sure most of you are aware of. He's been on my show multiple times before, uh, to launch a new product called VidProtect. Ian, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Mike. Ian, <clears throat> today we're going to be talking about something that uh, is uh, not going to be the end of the world for people, but it should be a concern if you have video content that you don't want to get spread around the internet. One of the concerns uh, of mine as a person who puts out uh, content in membership sites and tries to lock it down and tries to keep it from being shared is that people can go out there and steal my videos and then I don't get paid for it. I know that you have a friend of yours who had some of his videos stolen and put on uh, other websites and, and sold. Tell us a little bit about that and why we should be concerned. Yeah, so, I th you know, I think like a lot of people within the, the, the kind of IM world, we, you know, produce content for kind of training or for um, basically sale to um, students. And he'd created a, you know, really good kind of high-end um, course. And a few months after he launched it, he, he basically um, started um, you know, getting a few emails from people saying, hey, have you looked at Udemy? Mm -hmm. And he popped over to Udemy and basically saw that he, his entire course had been kind of copied, rebranded, rebadged, and the person selling it had made, uh, I think it was over $10,000 on the back of his, his content. So that's, you know, probably an extreme case, but it's it's something that you know for all of us whether we're producing you know webinar replays or we're producing kind of training videos or, or or content we want to keep that kind of for us because it's you know it's our content that we've kind of put blood sweat and tears into um, you know into producing and it, it it needs to go to the right um, you know the right audience there's some content that I don't care that gets shared. Uh, for example, my interviews, people can take my interviews yeah. and put them out all over the internet. I like, I'll thank you for, yes. for yeah. doing Agreed. that. <laughs> but there's other content, uh, specifically, uh, there's coaching modules that I have that people pay thousands of dollars for. And it's not fair yeah. for my students if someone goes out there, finds it, uh, even sometimes students will, will, will take these things and, and share them out with the world. It's not fair if that content gets distributed. And it's interesting that a lot of this content <clears throat> is a lot easier to be shared than one might think it, it can be. Uh, on, your, on your sales page here for the product that we're gonna be talking about today, VidProtect, it says, new cloud-based technology protects your videos and your business against content thieves and hackers with the push of a button. So what is this all about? Uh, and, and why did you create this? Okay, so originally I, I, I needed a solution to protect um, video content that I was producing in one of my um, kind of business interests. So I, I have a, I'm a co-founder of a company that produces um, daily market analysis and financial videos that we distribute to um, kind of investment banks. We distribute it to kind of traders and, and people who trade from home and we've got a network of publishing partners that that we 
um, have affiliate tracking on, on, on their particular um, modules. So when we distribute the content to them, obviously we want to make sure that they get paid, that we get paid, and that the content doesn't just end up in, in kind of rogue hands. So that was kind of the origin of, of the VidProtect tool. And after we'd kind of been using our own kind of version of it for a while, a lot of the publishers were coming to us and saying, actually, this is a really cool tool. Is it something that I can get a copy of? And we said, well, at the moment, it's just something that we kind of use for our own purposes, but we'll, we'll take a look. So that's kind of how it, how it kind of evolved into you know, the, the, the kind of form that it's in today. And it was, it was really saying, well, look, if, if we have a need as a small business you know, we're producing content that, that we're kind of putting out online. We need to, to secure that. And there'll also be a lot of other people that produce things like training courses or, um, you know, like you say, kind of premium content that they're happy to, to distribute to people, but they want to make sure that it's, it's, it's kind of secure. So, so that was really kind of how it all, um, you know, how it all evolved. And then we've... You know, as, as as time's gone on, we've you know we've looked at some of the key problems that you know that we've had, where people have been trying to scrape content from our sites, or you know people are, are just kind of going into the source code and just copying and pasting it onto their own web pages. So the tool has very much been geared around kind of solving the the, the kind of scraping issue and people coming and literally just stealing. Um, you know, links or source code from our kind of blogs and web pages, and publishing on their own, um, you know, on their own sites or blogs. And, and, you, and you mentioned a few things that, that I, I want to touch on, uh, and we're going to look at them in the in the demo. There's different ways that people can <clears throat> can steal content from you. There's one where there's like robots going around the internet and, and, and scraping and taking your content automatically and republishing it in other places. It's not a real human being doing it, it's a program. That's one instance that this happens. Uh, there's another where you have someone, uh, a human being that goes out there and they grab the content and they, they take it and they put it on their website. Now I know that there are advantages and disadvantages to using different services, whether you're using YouTube or Wistia or Amazon S3, that uh, I definitely wanna look at today and, and talk about that. But before we do, I also wanna say that if you're putting the time in to create this premium content and you're selling it to your customers, if other people are getting it for free, then what happens there is you're actually devalu devaluing the content that you're putting out there. It's not fair to the people that, that purchase it. And if someone that purchased that content then goes and sees that it's being given out for free, they're gonna say, what's going on here? It, that's not fair. That's one reason why with my, anything that I, I sell, I'm very, very <laughs> careful about ever giving that away in, in the future. I wanna be sure that I don't make my, my current customers angry that they've been cheated because then in the future when I put out another course they're gonna say well I can just go get that for free he's gonna he's gonna give that to me for free yeah. if, I, if I wait a, a couple of weeks he's gonna end up giving that away so you need to protect not only those assets but your reputation and your your business there so let's let's jump in and uh, I, I want to take a look and and talk about some of these advantages and disadvantages okay Okay, so can can you see my screen? We are in. Okay, cool. So just just so that we can um, kind of kick off to give people an idea of um, you know why they might need this. I actually sent you a link earlier, didn't I, Mike? And you tried to publish on your website um, some content that you'd essentially grabbed from me. Well, before, so, yeah, before you publish that, you, you had used the software to, to create a link with this and you used Wistia yeah. and you had uploaded, we had the video with Wistia and I grabbed that, that link that I was able to scrape from your, from your website and put it, just published it on a normal page, like like an interview page on MikeRemain.com. Yeah. I just published it, 
and that's the link right up there in the in the top left hand corner. Go ahead and go yep. ahead and click it. So if I want to hit enter. So you'll see here it came it came up there really quickly and then immediately redirected to to here. <clears throat> yeah, and basically the you know the same the same principle could apply to any kind of video content that you have on your um, you know web pages or blogs. So I mean this this was just one example, and you know it's it's fair to say that this kind of redirects. <laughs> That could actually go to anywhere. Um, it could go to um, JVZoo, and you know we've got um, an example. I think it was it, it was this one that if we go to or it could be Ian. I think a better example would be if someone tried to if if I had that on all my videos in my in my course, and someone tried to copy that and put it on their website, and someone tried to to, to share that and go to that, I could redirect them to my sales page. Yeah, to, to sales pages. So, so I mean, yeah, the, the the example of JVZoo, it could be that that's that's basically sending someone off to your product page mm -hmm. or, like you say, a sales page. It's it's really, um, you know, that that's that that's just a very kind of quick example. But it could, it, you could send people anywhere. So 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 really, that that's just to give. Um, you know, you guys are a, a, a kind of flavour of of how quick and easy it is to actually um, do this, and 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 the value of it in in terms of people steal your content so you can steal their traffic. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like an eye for an eye there. Yeah, and you know, I think it's fair game. So if you if if you just leave that um, leave that link on your content page, Mike, and I'll. Uh, I'll look forward to getting lots of traffic from you. You're very welcome. I'll, you can thank me in advance for that. Yeah. Cool. Show us, show us how that's all all set up, and I want to look at an example of a YouTube video as well. So sh show us how it's set up, and then we'll take a look. Okay. So within the, you know, within the tool, there's the, the there's three kind of options that um, you would have. So there's a video option, which essentially you would use this for protecting for example a video that's on um, Wistia or Amazon S3 so so like Mike said the kind of premium content that you would have that would typically be um, course material or training or coaching material and what you do is essentially enter in your um, URL that the video is is kind of hosted on put in where you would want the the, the um, restriction to apply so if I only want my content to display on micromain.com then I would enter the details there mm -hmm. and if someone happened to grab um, the content I can then specify where I want the traffic to go to so it could be a sales page it could be um, you know a, a kind of registration page for a, a coaching course it could be to an affiliate page that you know that I'm going to earn money from so it's it, it it gives people you know real kind of flexibility so that's that's kind of option one and not like I say that's that's geared very much towards the kind of Amazon S3 the Wistia the any kind of cloud-based or, or, or standard kind of hosting um, where you might publish um, video content to mm -hmm. The second kind of flavor is very much, whoops. <clears throat> I don't know what happened there. Uh, okay. Ig ignore me, I can, I, I can still do it from here. Um, what happened, what was the oops? I, I'm, I'm, it's because I've got I've I've got three um, three versions of the account open, so I've got an enterprise, a pro, and the the kind of standard version, and I think one of them's kind of um, log or, or upgraded me from um, a, a, a kind of basic to enterprise. <laughs> ah, so are we seeing are we seeing a pro version now? Yeah. So 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 sorry. This is this is the pro. Let me um, let me log. Yeah, let me log. So I want to make sure, and it's it's good that we that we point that out because I want to make sure that we point out the different versions 
that there are here. And I'm glad that you're being honest about that and, and not, not trying to show the, the pro version as the, as the basic. So we're looking yeah. at the one that people are going to see <clears throat> on the sales page. Okay, so yeah. now we're, so, in, we're in the basic account. Yeah, so the, we, we just looked at the example then for things like um, you know, Amazon S3 or, or, or Wistia. The second flavor then is for embed codes or iframes. So, so where, for example, you may have, um, for example, like a YouTube video mm -hmm. where you can copy the embed code and you would just put it into, um, into here. And again, you can say that you would like to restrict that content only to be shown on um, micromain.com. Mm -hmm. And if someone tried to copy the code or, or a, a bot or a scraper came along and, and tried to copy the code, um, this is where you would want to redirect it to. So it's very simple details to fill out. Really quick, and that that first one with video, I shouldn't use that for YouTube or Vimeo. I should only use the embed code one for YouTube and Vimeo or can I you also can, use that one? You can use this for um, for YouTube, but what you have to be careful of is the, um, the URL that you see on a YouTube video page at the top is mm -hmm. is the the kind of page URL. When when you kind of scroll down in um, YouTube, in fact, let me let me just show you quickly. Um, YouTube.co.uk. I'll I'll just pick any video. Let's have a bit of Gordon Ramsay. Good old. <laughs> Good old Gordon. So in um, okay, so so in YouTube, so so this is essentially the page URL mm -hmm. that this video appears in. This is then what I kind of call the vanity URL, which is you know the URL that gets shared, but essentially it does the same. Um, function as, as as this URL up at the top. If you're going to use the um, bandwidth protector to actually protect a specific kind of video file, um, what you are looking for is this. That is the actual video file. So that's where you would then copy. You would copy that and paste that in. So it's a lot easier just to use the embed code one, apparently. Yeah, and, and, and we do find that, you know, a number of people go straight to the, um, the you know, they'll go straight to the, the, the kind of vanity URL, copy it, paste that in, and, and, and then it, it causes issues. So, yeah, the, the, the embed code is, it works equally as well. It's, it's equally as quick, if not quicker. And yeah, it, it, it does exactly the same function, but okay. re you know, really easy. So I mean, all, all you're looking at is three pieces of information. One is the embed code, one is where you're going to allow the content to be displayed, and the third is where you would want to send any kind of naughty traffic to. Okay, cool, cool. And the third, you know, the third version, which has kind of multiple, um, Uses I've I've kind of used it for things like masking affiliate um, IDs or or, or affiliate um, you know links. I've also used it for for things like where, where I have content that's that's from an account and I don't want people to see um, details of uh, you know my account. Mm -hmm. All I would do is copy in the, the, the HTML code that I want to kind of mask, click generate, and I get a nice piece of kind of encrypted content that just looks like Chinese. And then all I would do is is take the um, you know take that piece of, of code and just paste it onto a blog page or, or, or a web page. So it's it's really kind of super easy to do and you know, if I can do it, anyone can do it. Cool, cool. Okay, let's let's take a look at some examples. Okay, so and we'll look at the pro accounts after. Right. Okay. So 
Here's um, a piece of um, code that's already gone through the the, the kind of thing. So, sorry, do you want me to show you an example of actually doing it? Yeah, well, yeah. I wanted to see. Uh, I think you've got a page with a YouTube video on it that I. Okay. Yeah. 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 So here's um, here's a page with a YouTube video, and if we go to view the page source, what we'll find um, here is this is the actual content. So that that is the content that displays this video. Mm -hmm. So if I if I now grabbed that and went over to um, one of my websites for example and tried to publish it what would happen is when I then go to view the page it protects it because you didn't get that site permission yeah, to, to and, have it on it and if I you know if I was looking at that there's nothing kind of within that that kind of code that, that even kind of references YouTube it doesn't even reference an iframe it, it, it just completely masks it so for a, for a human being, if if they really wanted to try and find that, then then they could grab it. But like we showed with your example on um, Mike from Maine earlier, you you grab that content, put it onto your blog, and now you're sending me traffic. Um, so that's that's kind of how simple it is, but you know, very effective. Go back <laughs> to that page with it on there, and one thing I wanted to point out is. If you're using YouTube to, to host your videos on them, I can anyone can easily go to this page and they can click on that YouTube video, click on the YouTube, and the, the logo comes up for YouTube. Go to YouTube and grab the link from there. Like Correct. That that can be done. There's really there's nothing uh, because of how YouTube works. There's nothing that can stop you from from having from stopping people from from doing that. However, that being said. If a scraper comes and someone's just like automatically having some some robot come out here and a scraper grabs it and puts it on a site, then you get that if, if that, that is going to redirect to you. Yeah, correct. I mean, if if, if this was your kind of mic from main um, webinar replay, like you said, you'd be happy if fifty thousand people went and um, copied and pasted it onto their websites because it's you know it's great coverage f for you. If, however, this was one of your ten videos in your thousand dollar coaching course, mm -hmm. you probably wouldn't be so happy, and, and well, and, and likewise, you probably wouldn't be publishing it on YouTube. And that's and that's the thing. I know that if you use YouTube, there's it's you can grab, you can click on that and grab that. What about with other other ways, like Wistia and Vimeo and, and Amazon S3, is it? Is, are you able to manually steal it with those, or is it more? Is it safer? Um, it's it's safer. I, I, I would I would say nothing is a hundred percent safe, but certainly you know in terms of people scraping the content, um, you know what what you're looking at doing is if I can just go into here just to um, grab the. Um, yeah, so so if I look at, at this for example, this is this is the kind of code that gets published via Vimeo, and this is typical of things like Wistia or Amazon S3. You'd you generally have like an iframe. You'd have the you know the URL of the actual um, video content, and that's very easy for a human or, or, or for a, a, a scraper to actually find that content. Right click, copy, paste it onto a blog or a web page, and hey presto, they've now got your um, content on their site. And I would say the other, you know, the other thing to point out is if you're using a service like Amazon S3 or, or, or kind of Wistia, um, every time somebody plays a video, you're you're essentially paying for the bandwidth. So, you know, by by stopping people having that content on their sites, you're also, you know, minimising the amount of um, bandwidth that you're being charged for. So 
that that that's just to um, you know kind of clarify clarify that. Yeah, because personally, I wouldn't I wouldn't <laughs> use this with YouTube and my membership material. No, uh, and, and I think like you said, YouTube has its place and it has a very good place in terms of content that you're happy to put out there for kind of prospecting or marketing or, or just kind of brand awareness but when you're then looking at things like premium content um, I don't really think that YouTube fits the bill um, as a kind of substitute for a professional sure. hosting service. I mean this is, this is just uh, I, th I think for the main benefit is going to be with, with scrapers coming, taking your stuff, republishing it, and yeah. you're going to be able to get free traffic from anyone who shares it. Yeah, and, and, and if I can, I've actually got a video here. There's, there's a website called Clip Converter mm -hmm. um, that essentially scrapes, or, or you can scrape web pages to um, download YouTube videos. So it's it's one minute long. Can go I, it, can I just it. play it? Mm -hmm. Turn the volume up. I can't really hear it. Yeah, just bear with me. And if we go to YouTube and look at the same page that that actual video is on, um, Here's an interesting thing that happens. So if we go over to a website called Clip Converter, this is specifically for trying to download um, YouTube um, videos. So if we just paste in the URL and hit continue, what you'll see then is it checks for the URL and it says, yeah, we've detected a YouTube video, which size do you want to download? So really easy to do that now. If we go back and look at the page that we've created with the YouTube video on, because we've put the encryption on it, the Clip Converter tool can't actually see um, that there is a YouTube video there. So when you put in that particular page and hit continue, it just says, sorry, we can't currently record this. So basically it's having problems actually downloading the content. If I had a video like on Mike for Maine, like if you took a URL with an interview on Mike for Maine and put it in there, would it see that there was a video on it? Um, if it, yeah, if, if if you've got a YouTube video on on kind of Mike from Maine, it would it would see that you've got um, content on there, so so people could basically go go and um, download it. Cool, cool. Okay, and and again, I. I I just want to be clear that nothing's going to protect videos entirely. If someone wants to go out there and do a screen record of it, there's n it's impossible yeah. to stop them from from using Camtasia and and stealing it. I think it's this is a a preventative measure. If you have content that you you've got problems with people stealing it, you want to make sure that they don't steal it. This is just another way of making it harder. For, for a scraper or, or something to come in there and just steal it from you. Yeah, I think like we were saying before, I mean, even, you know, even the big kind of global media companies, they're having huge issues with, with people stealing um, content and, and probably as quick as um, they come up with a solution, then people on the, on the kind of evil side come up with... Um, something to, to, to kind of counteract it. So it's, it's really, you know, you're looking at kind of preventative measures, you're looking at things that make it difficult for people to kind of grab or, or, or kind of steal content. There's nothing um, that's 100% foolproof. There will always be a way for people to do things. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's really prevention better than um you know better than the cure so sure. it's it's kind of doing doing what you can that's that's very kind of simple and easy it just takes you know a few seconds to um to do and it, you know it gives you peace of mind and a certain kind of increased level of um protection over and above just kind of putting things um online let's 
really quickly here, let's take a look at the, uh, you can, we kind of by mistake brushed by them, the one-time offers. So every everything that we've seen so far, that's gonna be included in the product that people see on the sales page. What are what are the upgrades that, that people can, can go for if, if they like? Okay, so the, the, the pro version is essentially, it has the same functionality. The big um, difference is that every single conversion that you do, you have the option to save. Now, if I go back to the example of, um, you know, why I first started using this in my um, kind of finance business, it was I, was, I was living and dying by Excel spreadsheets. Mm -hmm. So every time I was doing a conversion, I was having to open up a spreadsheet, copy and paste in the information. And it, 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 A, it was taking a huge amount of time and B, you end up with very big spreadsheets. And so this this solution, essentially, everything that you've got saved, you can you can just dip straight back in. You've got all the information in terms of you know the original code you wanted to protect. You've got the data around you know the site. If you wanted to go in and um, change any information, you can just change it. Click generate. So the basic one generates the code and it you, it works, but it doesn't save it so you can go back and find it in the future. Yeah, it's 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 very much for the kind you know the basic is very much for the kind of casual user. Um, it's logged me out again. Um, for the casual user that would maybe only do a few um, conversions a week, whereas say somebody who's uh, you know may have kind of a very active blog or an active website or or kind of have multiple um, blogs. Doing this over a period of time, you will build up quite a um, you know quite a list of. Um, you know conversions that you've done and this for example it you know you can filter by the type of conversion you've done so whether it was a an iframe a video or a html conversion you've got the information around you know the description when it was kind of created and like i say it's, it's a quick and easy way to refresh your memory in terms of where you're sending um, redirects to so if for example you were sending them to a sales page and that sales page is, is kind of no longer active. You might want to go in and, and kind of update it, just grab some new code without having to go back through and enter all of the information that you've already, um, you know, that you've, that, that you've already got stored there. So it. it's, it's, it's a real, um, you know, it is a, a time saver. What about the, uh, I think there's one more version, the Enterprise? Yeah, so, so the Enterprise, this, this kind of ties in really with the what what we touched on before in terms of um, the kind of heavier user or people that might want to use it, um, for example, to go out and prospect for kind of local business clients or, or kind of small business clients. And again, it's got the same um, functionality in terms of being able to encrypt video, iframe, and HTML. But what what you then have the ability to do is add in um, additional kind of um, client sites. So it could be blogs, it could be e-commerce sites, it could be um, you know websites. And for each of these, you can then kind of go in and you know you. Do you give so them access to it? <clears throat> I think, okay, you've got, I think you've got too many accounts open. I, I, I think <laughs> someone's actually, because this is just a shared, um, and, and, and until we go live, it's, it's a shared, <laughs> it's a shared Someone's account. Someone's kicking you out. Yeah. Whoops. Sorry about this. It's okay. Don't worry. I, I see all this happen before launches. People are in there working on stuff and finishing things. My, my audience understands. I don't know why. Someone changed the password on you? Okay. There you go. Let, let me just shut these other two down. Okay, so essentially you can you can have multiple um, 
clients that, that, that you can kind of reference any of the um, conversions that they've done and it, it, it gives you a record and if you want to add a new um, client you literally just go in type in am I able to give them access to it so could I have a client and say here this is your access you can now go and log in okay so when when we originally did this what we were thinking was um, that we we would give them kind of shared access mm -hmm. and then we decided with the enterprise version what what we would do is actually give any subscriber to the enterprise version up to 50 pro accounts that they can then give to either current clients prospects or um, people that they would like to um, kind of show the service to as as a, as a way to kind of build relationships with them to you know to generate further. Sure, um, they could they could they could use it as part of something they're selling to them, or they could use it just to get their foot in the door and say, "Look, you got videos, so let's protect them." Yeah. So so, so essentially, we we will give any any um, owner of the enterprise version fifty site credits. That they can then go and give, or, or if they wanted, they could they could actually go and sell them um, to you know prospective clients or current clients, and you know it's a fantastic way to um, you know get a foot in the door in terms of them being able to kind of approach them about oh well actually if you like the way that I've kind of um, secured your video content, did you know that I also do kind of explainer? videos and I do sales funnels and I do web design and you know Facebook marketing and, and all that kind of good stuff so it's you know it's a nice kind of easy in so yeah it's it's quite um, I would say it's quite a good deal that we're giving people you know that, that, that they will have 50 pro accounts that they can just give to people cool cool no I like that and I always like ways of getting your foot in the door and yeah. thinking more in the long term and, and just being able to offer them something <clears throat> either for free or as a paid service right, right from the get-go and, yes. and, and something of value to them. I mean, if they've got videos and they're, and they're especially if there's something that they're selling and it's out there on the internet, uh, people are going to be concerned with this. People don't want their, their stuff to be given away for, for free. But uh, Ian, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Is there anything else... Anything that we didn't cover, anything you wanted to mention before we wrap it up? No, I, th I think we've, um, you know, we've, we've covered everything. I think, um, you know, I would encourage people to um, obviously buy, <laughs> um, you know, just, just look at it in terms of even if you're not, for example, a prolific video user now, it may be something that, that a few months down the line you... Um, become more kind of involved in, in, in that side of, um, you know, your business. I think the thing to point out is during the launch period, the prices are relatively low. Once we've hit the end of week, the, the, the launch week, we are going to be upping the price to a minimum of $197. And then possibly we'll be um, in, in the future having... Um, the vid protect on a kind of subscription basis as we bring in new functionality and we bring in additional um, kind of enhancements. So anyone who kind of gets in during the launch period will essentially be kind of grandfathered into you know the the, the kind of later versions and still enjoy all the benefits at the same price that they've Let's got. Say 197. Uh, What's it going to be tomorrow when it launches? Okay, so the, the the basic version, I believe, is um, going initially on, on for about fifteen dollars. Okay, so it's a pretty a very big discount there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, the 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 pro, I believe, is um, around the sixty-seven dollar mark. Okay. And the enterprise version is ninety-seven dollars. So, like I said, with the enterprise version, we're actually giving you 50 pro accounts kind of thrown in with that. So, my maths isn't very good, but 50 times 67 is quite a few thousand dollars worth of, um, 
of, of, of accounts. So, you know, it's, it's, it's very, you know, it's very um, attractive. And I would say the other, you know, the other thing to point out is even if someone just joined on the basic account now, because they're not necessarily a, a, a kind of pro or, or kind of enterprise level user, um, we will honour any kind of upgrades that they want to do in the future. So even when the price rises, um, if someone, for example, wants to go from a, a, a kind of basic account to a pro, we will do it at the launch price. We're not going to be kind of charging people the the kind of higher price that will um, kick in after launch week. Cool. So if they want to get in, get, get their foot in the door now, uh, at least grab the the basic version. If they want to grab the other versions now as well, they can, or uh, they can they can wait for the the future. And again, thank you so much for coming on. And no, thank you for having me. Yeah, best of luck with your with your launch. Yeah, and thanks guys for, for for listening and taking the time. I hope you enjoyed the interview today with Ian. If you are interested in picking up Vid Protect. There's going to be an early bird discount starting tomorrow at 9 a.m. on Saturday, May 9th. You're going to be able to pick it up at the cheapest price along with my special bonuses. And also, if you're interested, there's a link above this interview. If you want to learn more about this, there's going to be a live webinar that's going to be at 8 a.m. Eastern, an hour before that cart goes live. Click that link. Go ahead and sign up for there, and you can learn more about how VidProtect can help protect your videos. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all tomorrow.